So the first concept to understand growth is um, the word co-occurrence. Yeah, by the, by the way, um, I'm just following the original glove paper that you can download from, well, it is actually on NTU Learn, but you can also download it from, um, from the Stanford uh, repository. So um, the XIJ is the number of times uh, word J occurs in the context of word I. So what does it mean? Uh, to uh, define this, we need to first set some um, uh, the size of the window defined in the context. Right? So for example, if the size of the window S is one, it means that uh, to appear in the same context is the same as, as being um, at distance of at most one. So that is next to each other. So let, let me give you an example. So if my document is I hate um, wearing face masks, wearing face masks, right? Then um, with the um, size, with the window size one, let's say if the main word is hate, right? So then um, the context is whatever is um, at the distance of at most one word uh, from, from hate. So at most one means that it's next to hate. So then words wherein and I are in the context of word hate if the window size is one. So it means that um, if the window size is one, then uh, say x, I don't know, uh, Hate and I is one, but X hate and face. So face does not, if the window size is one, then face does not appear in the context of hate because the the face is two words apart from um, from from hate, so it's zero. But if we change the uh, window size to two, right? So then. Um, what are words that are uh, at most two words apart from from hate? Is still I still wearing and face is also um, going to be added. So it means that now, uh, if I'm looking at uh, s equals two, then uh, x hate face is going to be two, but x hate mask. Is going to be zero. Oh, sorry, no, no, not two, one. Okay. Um, now, xi is going to be the number of times that any word occurs in the context of word i. So it's just the sum of of the, this xij overall possible chain. So then, if we divide xij by xi, then we get the probability that word j occurs in the context of word i. Well, um, here is an example. Of computing the word co-occurrence matrix. So these are the, there are just two documents here, um, and there are twelve words or so twelve terms. And if the window size is two, so one word occurs in the context of another word whenever they are next to each other. And by the way, when I printed this, uh, the term document matrix is actually symmetric. So x i j equals x x j i. Uh, it's just that I co computed it in R, so and when I printed it, um, it is printed so that the whatever is on the diagonal and below the main diagonal is is just printed as, as zeros. So when you look at the output of this um, term co-occurrence matrix in R, you just simply ignore um, ignore. Um, the, the, the zeros. So the interesting part here is is above the diagonal. Now, so how can we explain, for example, the, this number two? So bear and black, right? So it means that uh, there are two times in this uh, corpus that the word the words black and bear appear either next to each other or um, at two words apart, right? And it is true, right? So there is the first pair, bear black, and there is the second pair. Bear, black. So two times they appear um, 
in the context of each other. Or if, say, you look at this number three, yes and sir, then the words yes and sir appear three times in the, con in the context of each other. So yes, sir, sir, yes, and yes, sir. All right, I hope this is clear. So uh, the following example is taken from the glove paper. Uh, so it takes a lot of time to produce it. So they trained glove on a large uh, corpus, probably Wikipedia or something. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, the purpose of the, this example is to show that these um, elements of co-occurrence metrics and the probabilities, they, they somehow capture semantic meaning of, um, of, what, of, of the, the words, right? So um, look at the first um, row of the, this table. So, so here, th this number is the probability that the word solid appears in the context of the word ice. And this is the probability that the word solid appears in the context of the word steam. And of course, uh, since ice is solid, it is much more likely that um, the word solid appears together with the word ice than it appears with the word steam, which we can see by the fact that the, 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 the first probability is much bigger than the second probability, or that the ratio of these two probabilities is much bigger than one. Well, at the same time, if we look at the second row, so here we have uh, the probability that the word um, gas appears in the context of ice and the word gas appears in the context of steam. And of course, uh, it is much more likely that uh, gas appears in the context of the word steam because steam is gaseous, right? And th this can be seen by the fact that this, uh, the first probability is much smaller than the second probability or that the ratio of the two probability is much smaller than one. If we look at the third uh, row of this table, then we see that the word water appears quite frequently in the context of the word ice and in the context of the word steam. Both numbers are, well, they're almost, they can kind of close to each other and they're large. Well, as compared to, well, generally small numbers here, these two numbers are large. This is because, well, water is related to both ice and steam, right? So, because water can be ice and water can be uh, gaseous when it is steam. Well, at the same time, um, the fourth um, row, so both of these numbers in the fourth row, they're, they're small. Because the word fashion seldom appears in the context of ice and it seldom appears in the context of steam. But at, at the same time, the ratio, you know, water, so they, they, they are also almost equal, which can be seen by the fact that these numbers, the ratios of probability probabilities are close to one, right? So uh, the purpose of this exercise is to show that uh, it is important to consider these um, uh, word co-occurrences and that ratios of probabilities, uh, they somehow capture the semantic meaning of uh, of our our words.